All right, we are back with another installment of Accepting the Challenges, where we want to have a platform, shine some light, give some love to today's educators um, around the world. And uh, today is not going to be any different. Um, today, we have a young lady uh, with us by the name of Danielle Shelton. Danielle, wa welcome to the uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to it's great to have you. So, if you will, um, introduce yourself a little bit um, to the listeners, to the viewers, um, kind of what you do right now, what your current role is, because I think you've got a few different roles in the education yeah. world. So, so share with us a little bit about what those are. Um, well, right now in education, I'm a high school teacher. That's like my main, what people say gig, that's my main gig is high school teacher. I actually teach uh, dual enrollment. I teach introduction to literature for uh, FIU. And then I teach um, ACE uh, English literature, which is like a Cambridge course. So it's like, you know, high level yep. students who want to graduate um, a little bit earlier and you can qualify for a Cambridge degree. So I teach um, ACE English literature and that's like my main gig. And then off to the side, I teach um, college prep for uh, City College and then from also for City College, I do instructional design for them as well. So that's like a separate entity. <laughs> and then away from City College, um, I'm an editor. So I edit for Ballard Publishing. So um, in addition to editing for them, I take several different side contracts when it comes to editing. So I'm, I'm freelance editor, nice. but that's just the one company um, that has resourced me and that I've worked with for several years now. So I am um, 20 years into the game, like knocking on the door of 20. I'm like 19 and some change. Um, I've taught middle school English. I've taught sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. I've seen my gamut of uh, schools. Um, and I have skipped from middle school to teaching college and then uh, from college back to high school and then back to college. The amount of online schools that I have taught on they they span on i have a a pretty good <laughs> a pretty good network of schools where i have taught um literature and english literature is like my baby i love it i love all things literature i'm such a nerd and um i like to to welcome my students into nerddom like turn them all into bookworms i really? <laughs> that's that's my thing like how to take that one kid that hates to read and get them inspired. And then not, it's not just kids, it's grownups too. You know, my college students, sometimes they just don't want to, and I have to find ways to inspire them. So outside of that, I'm a mom <laughs> and a wife. Awesome. So, um, yeah, that's, that's about me. So I, I have a lot going on. I have several different things going on all at one time, but, um, I love it all because it's all connected. Um, I do have a project that I'm working on. So I have a book coming out and that awesome. will be coming out very, very soon. Um, I, though I am an editor, I am, uh, slacking on editing my own material. <laughs> well, yeah. Um... <laughs> So I can, so I can, I can share, like I'm in the process of, I say I'm in the process of writing a book. I haven't written a word down in a couple months now. Um, because for me, academically, I wasn't the greatest. So it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, so I can, uh, um, I empathize with anybody who's taken the process of actually doing it. Uh, mine is from a very personal standpoint. So it's sharing mm -hmm. a lot of my experiences and trying to figure out how to show you know how i use those things that were a negative or you know traumatizing you know into a positive so do, do you have a name for the book that you want do you want to speak about that yet or is it still kind of under wraps um it's a little under wraps okay, it's a little okay. under wraps but um it will be out i'll probably be brave enough to say the name towards the end <laughs> towards the end here okay um because i always get a little nervous uh, this is like the first book, though I've had several different things I've written. This is the first one that's actually made it to publishing and actually made it to like getting ready to actually come out. So this is like nerve wracking for me. Oh, no doubt. 
No doubt. No doubt. Well, I appreciate it. Sounds like you got you definitely have a lot going on. Uh, how many kids do you have? Three. I have um, just my own my bio and then two uh, bonus kids. So three awesome. total. Awesome. 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 I've got five. So um, <laughs> my uh, we've uh, two, I've got two, two, two that are university age. So they're off at university. Oh, nice. Um, my wife and I have two together. So um, uh, so my. My middle son, who's in middle school, he just moved in with us over Christmas, and okay. um, so he's here. And then I've got a, a nine-year-old and a f well, soon to be four-year-old uh, here at the house. So um, right now, it's you know like everybody else with COVID, it's a little bit uh, things are a little bit hectic, and um, the oldest two are schooling from home, so they're doing virtual. They chose to do virtual. Virtual, yeah. Um, you could have went into the classroom. That yeah. they they could have done that. Um, but they, but they've shown, they've chose to do virtual. And then, uh, my three-year-old was doing preschool. We did have him in preschool just because of that age, um, and the social interaction. And mm -hmm. it, 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 there was much more of a loss, you know, at three or four years old, having that, you know, fine motor skills and, you know, those things, they need uh, that. but he's been on, uh, he's been on quarantine for the last, uh, week and a half. So he was, he was identified as a as a direct contact via, someone in his oh, classroom. No. Yeah. So I think it was one of his teachers. Uh so he has no symptoms. He's you know, he's totally okay. He hasn't, you know, to date, he's got till Friday before he's released and can go back um can go back to school. I think his entire class was on uh was shut down. So uh so he can go back um in um in class. So 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 I think I think he's gonna be fine. So yeah. But and that is my concern. My concern with this whole thing is just what are we all going to do? Because yeah. at some point you, you just can't avoid it. So that yeah, is Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think I think that there I think even a new I mean there's we're learning stuff new about it every day. Um I did see today where um Yeah, what's funny is literally it just popped up on the news again. Um so th again, this is one of those things that's so weird. Literally two hours ago, and I, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't have to be about this, but two hours ago, they stated one thing about how it can be transmitted um, mm -hmm. through the air. Yes. And now literally they just posted a news article just now saying that that was, they've removed that guidance and the website <laughs> was made in error. So you know it's like of course is it political is it you know what is it who knows but anyway let's get back to you let's get back to you so so you mm -hmm. have been in how long have you been a teacher now um knocking on 20 years knocking on 20 years if so, I, so if i have to to say i've been a teacher all my life really like i was that that kid so that's that what was, i was going to ask you that, that that that's what i was going to ask you so so take us all the way back to you know way, 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 way back to your beginnings. Tell me a little bit about your life, your journey through life, and maybe how that led you into education. Um, well, I can remember from very little, I always loved to teach people and love to teach. Um, <clears throat> and when I was a little girl, I would line up my baby dolls, like line them up and then like teach whatever lesson I was teaching. You know, I had like my own little makeshift classroom and I can remember, I don't even think I was, maybe I was middle school, high school ish. I'm not sure. But one of my younger cousins, uh, she came over to play with me and my form of play was like teaching her how to read. So <laughs> That was nice, nice. Snooze, snoozeville for like my, my younger cousin who came over to play. But that was like my former play is like teaching her how to read. And I come from a very close knit family. Okay. Um, my grandfather, um, he came from a family of sharecroppers. So he is one of those people that he ingrained in us hard work and he ingrained in us values and he ingrained in us things that we need to take with us. Um, when he, he stopped going to school, he had like a seventh grade education, mm -hmm. but he was able to build, um, good drum towing. Um, and, uh, he went from having that to landscaping and he has like a landscaping company.
company now that my uncle has since taken over, but my grandfather definitely paved the way for us to be able to um, see what hard work looks like because he came from Georgia and he came literally from nothing. Like there is a picture of my grandfather and his brothers and sisters and this picture is like stuck like in my mind. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of him and his brothers and his sisters. None of them have shoes on and they're in like torn up overalls and they're sitting in this, they're on the porch and there's this kind of like heavy set white guy that's sitting in a rocking chair and all these little black children around him looking so sad. None of them with shoes and they have like torn up clothes and there's like, and it's a black and white picture. Mm -hmm. And I wish that <laughs> I would have taken that picture when yeah. I had, I don't even know who has that picture now. But it shows him and his brothers and his sisters like this is where they came from. And when people talk about race, sometimes I have such a memory where I'm like, we are not that far removed. Like literally my gra my grandfather is is he can remember like in his childhood it existed. So we're not so far removed and people like to speak in these ways, like we're so far removed from that time, but we're really not. Yeah. So he was like a driving force in my life. And he started something called the Willing Workers Mission. Okay. And what he would do is he would ride around Pompano Beach and he would pick up homeless people and he would have food for them and have a good word for them and have supplies for them. And he made all of us go with him. So from a very learn, young age, I learned to give back. And I learned to to care about people. And I think that helps when it comes to being a teacher, because I learned how to really care about people and how to really look beyond these hard surfaces. Mm -hmm. So when I started teaching it in inner city schools, I always connected with my students on a level beyond where other teachers could get to like they would send me i think i said this in one other um podcast they would send me like the kids that were quoted the the most difficult kid or the kid that you know had all these issues and then they would get to me and they'll be like oh and i would look crazy because i'm like well i don't really see that i'm not really having issues with that kid but I was able to see them beyond their situation, beyond how they grew up, beyond their house, beyond whether or not they were able to take a bath that day. Like I was able to look beyond that and see who they were as young people and see like the lights in them that they needed. And I really believe I was able to do that because from so young, I was taught like you are not better than this person. Sure. And I was brought up in a way to serve. And because I was brought up in a way to serve, I naturally rolled into a position that I feel like is one of service. Because when you're in the classroom, you're literally there serving your students. And what people don't understand about teaching is teaching isn't just, I come in and I do a lesson. That's not teaching. It's not what it is at all. Absolutely. And Absolutely. in order for my, in order for them to learn from me, they have to feel connected to me. And if they don't feel connected to me, the whole day is a complete wash. The whole lesson is a complete wash. Kids don't learn from people that they're not connected to. They just don't. So one of the things that I really try to make sure that I do is find a way to connect with each and every kid in my room. Now, now tell me a little bit about the school. Um, and the makeup and the demographic of, of, of where you currently work? Where I currently work is a very mixed school. Um, it's kind of in the heart of Hollywood. So where I work is like um, we have some inner city students and then we have like some students who are bussed in from different areas because we have so many programs. There's like a marine program and a mechanics program and the ACE program and the Cambridge program. So we have like all these different programs where you have upper middle class people or students who, who are bussed in. And then you have the neighborhood kids who come and there's like this perfect blend in the middle um, so generally when I get classes, I get a blend of students who are bust in or students who are upper class and students who are just struggling to have a meal in the morning. Sure. So it's it's a very good mix, because when I taught in the inner city, even though it was a performing arts school, 
most of those kids belonged to that neighborhood and most of those kids really struggled. Yeah. This school right now is like I, I get to see the best of both worlds where you have some kids who are struggling and then you have some kids who are from like this upper class neighborhood who are able to take advantage of the programs that the school offers. Nice. Do you do you in so I guess so I guess uh, the first question I have is, is what are some of the things that you do? um, to kind of connect with those kids or connect with, um, those students in the beginning? You know what? I'm not afraid to open myself up. I'm an open book. So the first thing that I do is show them that I'm human. If, because I mean, why not? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> there are some teachers that I know that have like the teacher cape and they come in and they're yeah. never wrong. And they're, you know, I'm the teacher and I, you know, like I, that's not my personality. So yeah. the first thing that my kids connect with, with me is like, I'm human. And I let them know, like I make mistakes, even though I'm an English teacher, I might misspell the word, just like raise your hand and say, Hey, Michelton, you know, and then I'm like, it's OK to be silly. And they connect with the part of me that needs to be silly. Like maybe I've had a really rough night and get through today. I need to just be silly so I can. However, they come in. I play music when they come in. Sometimes they come in dancing. Sometimes we dance at the door before they come in. They they see me in every way. So they see the silly me and they see the serious me and they see the emotional me and they see the they see the me that that's in front of them. They don't see any pretense. They don't see me pretend to be a certain way. They just see who I who I really am. And because I'm just an open book and they're able to connect to that, then oftentimes they connect to me. And I've even had students who tell me, you know, Miss Shelton, when I came in this class, I didn't think I was going to like you, but you're all right. I'm like, oh, OK, thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So let me ask you this. Does, do you also intertwine that in because you said you have a mix of, of who your demographic is? Um, from a student standpoint. So do you kind of intertwine that for them to kind of learn to relate to each other and understand each other? Because, you know, you might have as, as you know, you might have some kids who are living in a neighborhood where they don't see certain things or they don't see, you know, certain, certain, certain ethnicities or religions or these things. So they come in. So, so do you also kind of intertwine that in with that a little bit? I absolutely do. And that this is why I love literature because I use literature as such a gateway to connect people. I use these stories as such a way to connect and draw connections to show them that even though you came from here and you came from here, you guys are not that different. And then I have open dialogues in my classroom. I have open forums. I have open discussions. There are some people that are really uptight and they don't want to let the students talk. I'm OK with them talking. They need to talk. They need to get it out. They need to be able to hear each other. Um, one rule in my classroom is we respect the other person's opinion. Whether or not you agree is beside sure. the point. But we have to respect each other's opinions. We and need I, more, we need more of that in society. Yeah. And I try to teach tolerance like it, you don't have to agree. But and that's OK. It's fine if you don't agree, but you do have to respect each other. Sure. And then I, I have the dominant space. So this is my realm. This is my domain. Yes. You don't get to. And I have like rules in my domain. These are the things that we don't do within this domain. And it, it helps them be open and it helps them see things from another perspective, because now once you take this story that they didn't think they were going to like, and then I'm able to show them how they're so similar. And then you pull it into the discussion and then you pull it into a journal and then you get them to share their own stories. They all start to see, oh, OK, you know what? We're not that different. We don't think that different mm -hmm. where we grew up. Our houses may be different, but the lives that we have may not be that different. Who? Did, did you have an educator along your journey that kind of inspired you and you were like, oh, that's that's what I want to do. That right there. That's it. Yes. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I had a teacher named it's Boric. I had her for third grade, fourth grade and fifth grade. Okay. I think she just she just liked us. So she just wanted to move grades with us. Yeah, nice. Um, 
and I will forever, she sticks out in my mind as such an influential person with such a good heart and such a kind spirit. Like I learned a lot through her. And then middle school, I don't have a pivotal person. But by the time I got to high school, it was my chorus teacher and my band teacher. I was in chorus and I was in band. So Mr. Howard and Mr. Hines, those were like my teachers at Ely High School. And man, my chorus teacher, he took no crap, like none. If we were singing off key mid concert, he would cut us off and we would be so embarrassed. He'd be like, start again. He didn't take he only wanted the best sure and that was it don't give him anything other than your best because if you're gonna even attempt to give him less than your best it's gonna all be a problem so what did you learn from that though it really made me be like i need to make sure that i'm putting forth my best effort and i'll tell anybody i wasn't the best student in terms of like it wasn't school wasn't easy for me I wasn't like a straight A student, Mm -hmm. but what I had above a lot of kids is I was willing to work. So I would work harder. And that's how I got a lot of the way is I just outwork people. Maybe I wasn't as smart as you, but I could work harder than you while you're sleeping. I'm going to wake up. And while you're doing that, I'm going to do this. So I was that kid who was like, I knew I had to overcompensate for what I didn't possess. So I was just willing to work a lot harder than a lot of other people. And that's what I saw with with band. With band, I got a clarinet. I had no idea how to play a clarinet. And my band teacher was like, yeah, so you're gonna need to figure that out and you're gonna need to learn it and you have a music test. And I was like, what? (laughs) So then I had to learn how to play the clarinet. And what that made me do is it forced me to to know how to be vulnerable and to open myself up. Because at this point now I have to go to people and be like, can you show me? Can you teach me? Can you? And now I have to wedge myself under people who knew what they were doing and who took the time to teach me. So being able to be humble and have that humility helped me to be able to move up and eventually become like a leader in the band and a leader in the chorus because I wasn't afraid to ask for help one and two, I wasn't afraid to work hard. So I would just outwork everybody. And and I'm guessing you've applied that now to kind of your everyday <laughs> life and, and how you do is that is that a lesson you also try to pass down? Um, so so I guess I, is that I guess my first question is, is that a lesson you kind of pass down to your kids? Yes, it absolutely is a lesson that I try to pass down to my kids. I try to make sure that they know, listen, it doesn't matter how smart you are. What does matter, though, is how hard you work. Sure. That is one of those things that I definitely this right now I'm in my six year old's room. This is her map behind me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I try to make sure that she knows who she is, even at a young age. I try to make sure that the 16 year old that's across the hall, that she knows who she is. Like you need to know who you are yeah. and you need to be willing to work for whatever it is you want. You need to be willing to put in the time and put in the work. And that that makes sense. I had a college professor, another influential person named Dr. Hobbs. Dr. Hobbs took no mess, no crap from anybody. (laughs) And at FAMU, that just was the the bar. If you're here, you're here to work. And that's just what what we knew. And Dr. Pratt and Dr. Hobbs, those were my two that kind of stick out in my mind. They pushed you. And they pushed you to the place to where you were like, I cannot do this anymore. And then they make you realize, yeah, you can. Now, now keep going. Now that you got over that hump, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it and and it and it sets a bar of because it sounds like it sounds like your grandfather did that too. It found that he laid that foundation in your journey of hard work and overcoming things, and you know, not um, not just taking what circumstances are necessarily laid at your at your feet but making sure that i that i push forward and 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 i push on beyond expecting expecting more out of yourself than maybe others may be expecting uh out of you and that's uh i think that's a i think that's a great mindset Let let me ask you this um why do you do what you do because i really want to touch people i really I just want to, I want to touch people. I want to embrace. I want people to know that it's okay to be who you are. Um, Because I think people are so disconnected now. 
Like people are so disconnected and we're so busy trying to be all these other things. Just be who you are, whoever that is, and be happy with that. So and it took me a minute to get there. But having this 20 year career and seeing these young girls and seeing these young boys and seeing these people, I really keep doing. And I, I said this before. Every year I'm going to leave education like every year. I'm like, this is my last year. <laughs> 20 years later, yeah, yeah. this is this is my last year. But I keep coming back because. These kids and these and their parents, they need someone to who isn't afraid to embrace them. And that's what keeps me here. That's what keeps me going is the ability to be able to embrace. And I I'm that teacher that like I have kids who show up at my room. I have no idea who they are. Like, you're not even my student. What are you doing in here? Like, what? Who are you? And they're like, oh, yeah, I heard about you. So what's yeah, up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, uh. So. Yeah, yeah, you're the you're the topic of conversation at lunch, and I just want to walk in and see, you know, see who you are, and see if you're really gonna get on me like they say you get on everybody else. So you know, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah and then yeah. you just have like a frequenter who's like coming in class, and I'm like, could you please go to wherever you're supposed to be? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that I, I stay connected to the kids, and that keeps me connected to everything else. So, so tell me, tell me about that student that you had throughout your journey and it was just you know you you it was like okay this is why I do what I do this right here is Man. this is it do you have do you have one I have so many um but I'm going to give you one because this it, it sticks out cuz this was college level okay um, and this is at a time where my husband decided that we were going to move to Texas and have the Texas dream oh boy so <laughs> Is this Texas dream? Is this like going to go and like have a farm and chickens and that to kind have of thing? the, you know, the big Texas house and the, you know, cause uh, in South Florida, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's you, get twice, you can get twice as much of everything in Texas as you can from Miami. Absolutely. Exactly. So he was like, we can do this and we're going to have this and we're going to have that. And I was like, fine. So, uh, to move the story along, I ended up being an adjunct at San Jacinto college. And I can remember having a student who came to me when the semester was over and he said, you know, Ms. Shelton, I just want you to know, I really appreciate having you um, as a teacher, because up until now, I thought all black women were ignorant. And I was like, oh, oh, OK. And he was like, you really you know, made an impact on me because I haven't really met very many black people that weren't just angry and that weren't just, you know, like criminals. And he was like, I haven't done a background check on you yet, but, you know. <laughs> You seem like a really nice person. <laughs> yep. so like, oh, yep. Okay. And then I said, well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to change your perspective. And I'm sure. glad I was able to change that for you and show you that, you know, there are black people who exist that aren't, you know, angry. Yeah. And mo mo all, all, nearly all of them. Right. Just like, you know, just, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like shedding that, uh, which, which I can understand and, and which kind of goes into, you know, when, when you when, uh, and we talked, to, I've talked about it on different episodes, so I can imagine, like, it, it's it, it, so you you got to taste somewhat of what some white teachers get when they go into an inner city, and you know those there are no white people around, there are no white people you know in their neighborhood, and now here they've got a uh, you know a young fresh out of college white lady telling them, hey you know, you're going to listen to me and you're going to do this. Well, they're looking at you like, well, wait a second. Like this ain't, yeah. you know, so, so it is. And, and that somehow we got to figure out in our education system of how to break down a lot of those barriers and those different things. So I can imagine that was interesting. Um, and yeah. one that kind of gives you a little bit of affirmation of like, if nothing else, it, cause, cause what that did, what you did was change your trajectory of other people, being mislabeled and um, hated just because of the color of their skin and those things right. in the future. Cause now he changed his thought process. So now when he has kids, hopefully he educates them and change their thought process and, you know, and that's how it goes on. So that's awesome. 
That's yeah, awesome. And, and, and I'm always open to that. He was the first that came to me, but there were a lot that followed after him in that time in Texas. And it, Texas was very strange for me. It was very much like being pushed all the way back. And Texas has very defined lines when it comes to race. And I did not know that until I was there and living day by day. And I was like, oh, this is really like I'm not in Florida anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let me ask you this. So you've been, you've been, you've been teaching 20 years. If you could pick the phone up and you could call yourself 20 years ago and say, Hey, you're going into education and you're going to be taking this journey. Here's some stuff you need to know. What would that be? The first thing I would tell myself 20 years ago is you can't save every kid. That's like, first thing, you can't save everybody. It was heartbreaking when I had that realization. I was gonna, I, well, I was gonna say, even hearing you say it and seeing your body language, you saying it, it feels that feels a little bit heavy for you. Yeah, it is. It is, and that was having that moment where you just you can't, you can't save everybody. So if I could tell myself that 20 years ago and save myself some heartache, save myself some tears, save myself some phone calls and family trips and <laughs> social worker calls, sure. like if I could save myself some time just to know, listen, you just you can't save everybody. So save the ones that you can. That's the first thing. The second thing is. Don't take your work home. Leave your work at work, <laughs> which, which is, is hard. Which is tough to do when you care. It's very hard to make that disconnect. Leave your work at work. It is very hard to make the disconnect because I, I can remember my first three years teaching. I was at the school literally an hour ahead of class starting and I would stay like two to three hours after school got out grading paper because I wanted everybody to have their paper back the next day. And I wanted everything to be set up and I would set up my classroom. I, like I wanted everything to just be perfect. And I worked so much that I literally had a, a breakdown. Like I got sick. I got so sick yeah, yeah. that I couldn't do anything. And my body literally was like, so the, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. 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 No, no, <laughs> I got different plans for you. Right. Like This is, we're not we're going to go about it this way. Right. We're going to stop. And once I had that moment of just being sick and not being able to go to work, I had so much anxiety behind not being able to go to work. But having that break made me be like, listen, you, you won't be able to go. And then I started to forgive myself. Like, maybe you're not going to have the papers back tomorrow. Maybe they won't get their papers back until next week. And that's OK. Maybe if they're handing in an essay and it's a four page essay and you have 150 kids, maybe every kid isn't going to get their essay back next week. Maybe they'll get it back in two weeks. Like I, st I had to start forgiving myself for not being the perfect teacher, yep. Yep. but just being a human teacher. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You got to give yourself a little bit of grace. Yeah. And I, and I had to, to be able to do that. And then I had to, once, once I got that for myself, I had to teach that to the parents. Right. Cause now I, I learned it for me. So now I have to erect boundaries and I have to say, these are the times that you can call me. These are the times that you should not call me. These are the times when I'm going to take assignments. This is the time I will no longer take assignments. Like I had to, to really start to set solid boundaries. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so kind of moving along in your journey, tell me, tell me a little bit more about it's lit. Tell me, tell me what you do and tell me, uh, tell me more about that. Yeah, it's lit. That is my, uh, consulting page. Um, it's lit works. And, uh, I came up with the idea because I'm a literature teacher yep. and, um, my students, would uh, always be like, what are we going to do today? Oh, it's lit. It's lit. And then I was yeah, like, OK, yeah, yeah. I said, y'all know what? That'll be really good. I'm going to make that. So then I started just saying, you know, to, to mess with them. Sure. Initially, it started out with like, we're about to get lit today. It's lit, you know, and then yeah. like go into the story. And then all of a sudden it started catching on. And then when I would get evaluations or other teachers would come in the room and be like, oh, I like that. So I was like, OK, let me, you know, so I that was kind of like, here. Yeah. right. 
so that was like the start of, of it's lit. And then I I like to connect my students to to what it is they're doing. Um, so if you go on like my Instagram page, you'll mm -hmm. see all these different examples of student work and how I'm able to get them to connect and how I'm able to get to them to do higher order thinking and how I'm able to. So it went from just being something that I did in the classroom to reach them to understanding that other teachers also want to reach their student in this way. And the way in which literature is broken down is in such a simple way that other people can take it and they can say, oh man, this can help me. And then I started realizing as other teachers came to me like, oh, you know what? You posted that the other day. How did you do that? Can you teach me how to do that? So the more people sent me inboxes from Instagram, like, how did you do that? Can you help me out with this? How did you get the kids to do that? I saw your kids product house. So the more people reached out to me, the more I was like, OK. And then <laughs> my husband was like, you know, people get paid for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that stuff you're doing for free, like people, people make money doing that. And I was like, OK, you know what? Let's let's go full steam ahead. So then I, I rolled into it's lit works and I try to make sure that I keep my um, student samples and that I keep things up to date. I also um, went on Teachers Pay Teachers and just put up simple things. Um, I think the syllabi that I put up there is like for free. <clears throat> but I have like simple things that are up there that can just help teachers along the way. And that's really what I want to do at the end of the day is help students understand literature and help teachers be able to teach literature in a way that all of them can get it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my wife in her spare time, she uh, she does um, sight words training and tutoring for young kids and so, nice. so my three-year-old he was actually just right before we came on here um he was doing a digital version of and i know literature you're probably like no put a book in his hand like getting <laughs> some paper and let him turn some pages and we do we do but we utilize the ipad when mm -hmm. you know when when necessary and it was the um um i can't i want to say she called them bob books like where like they're like um uh matt sat yeah sam yeah sat, like you know that 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 type of thing so he was so we we we've we, he gets three gummy bears and three little skittles for every book that he oh. reads, right so so he so now all of a sudden he's on it right now he's trying Super to figure motivation. that at, yeah at three at three like he's like okay boom i'm like hey dad i got it like you want to come see like i have to go through so um yeah reading is um for me um, I, I, readings never was never an issue. It was never a learning disability for me of not being able to read or any struggles to read. Um, the problem for me is just having ADHD. I struggled. Like I couldn't, it's yeah. sitting down and try to read stuff. Um, it's, it's not existent. Thank heavens for audio books. Um, for me, I, again, I know you're in literature and I know there's that physical experience of turning the page and I do. I use audio books. I use them. All right. Well, good. Well, I don't, I don't feel as bad then. I, I was afraid to bring it up because I might get <laughs> chastised on here. It's like, that's no, not, it's not the same thing, right? It's not. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, reading. Yeah. It allows the imagination to go as kids. It allows, you know, as uh, you know, it, even as an adult, I would say some people use it to just kind of escape from the world and, you know, uh, not think about anything else and, and not and not focus on anything else. So um, so we'll we'll start to wrap this up. Um, I think this has been a great journey um, and a really interesting journey. Um, and I think we'll actually I want to actually have you back on once your book is out. So I'm going to give you nice. one not not <laughs> not not pressuring you. Not so you don't have me. you don't have to answer, <laughs> but if you want to share the name of your book, you can. If not, we'll just segue into how we typically wrap this up, and I'm going to ask you a few direct questions about yourself. And then what I'm also going to do is I've been on your side of a lot of interviews, and I've always had questions. So at the very end, I'm actually going to allow you to ask me a question uh, before we wrap it up. So if before we get to that, if you want to share the name of your book, this will probably be four, five, six, seven weeks out before this comes, before this podcast at least comes out because there's been so many that have come in. Um, so it's completely up to you if you want to share it. Um, if you say, Hey Shane, I'll, I'll share it. But if you can hold this interview until November, or December, I can do that too. Um, 
you know, it's completely up to you. It's good. I have a long, a long title and a short title. Okay. So this is where, where I'm back and forth. Okay. The short, the short title is unfinished works from the jumbled mind of a writer. That's the okay. short title. Okay. <laughs> the long title, this is me and my publisher. This is our fight right now. The long title is an unfinished collection of works from an actively busy mind of a writer who intended to finish each project, but fell into more projects. That's the long title. <laughs> okay. Okay. One, one sounds like a title and the other one sounds like a description. Right. So, <laughs> so think, that's, what, that's yeah, where we so are. Fitting all of that one title on one. That's probably the way they're like, look girl, like this ain't going to work. And this ain't like, this ain't, this ain't going to, we got to fix this. Right. So, uh, so you're like, I am like, I'm, I'm, um, speaking for me is it comes naturally. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Right. You might, you might, you might hit me up and say, Hey Shane, you know, what can we do to get you booked in to come down here and speak to my school? I want to come. I can come yes. down there. It's easy for me. I, I can sit in front of those kids and talk. But when it comes time to like get my thoughts down and write it down, because I'm able to, and, and, and maybe this, maybe you'll relate to this. I'm able to convey such emotion verbally mm -hmm. and with my body language and my tone Yes. That writing something out, I feel like I have to add a bunch of extra words in there to describe something in order to be able to do that because it's like I don't feel like I'm getting across the same impact as you. Yeah, and I can definitely tell you that's something that's that has been my whole back. Like I want people to feel it the way that I felt it when I wrote it. And when I go back, and that's why people say you should never edit your own material, because when you go back, you start to change it and it begins to morph into a totally different book, which is not what you intended. So uh, it, it is definitely um, a work. It's a love. But um, I think with this particular project, I was able to really do what it is that I love to do. That's so, awesome. um, and I think the emotion is there. I think people will connect to it and, um, I'm excited about it. E ex extremely excited about it. So I'm, I'm glad I shared the, the two working titles. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of them will make it out. And you know, when you hear this, you can look for one of them. Um, and if we put this out once stay in touch with me. So if we put this out, when the book comes out, we can put a link in the description to the book and that kind of thing so that people know. Um, and I totally get, you should not edit your own work. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, uh, I'll probably be in touch with you. Um, yeah. because, um, it, my, my senior year, uh, English four, I got a 62, um, in, in English, uh, my sophomore year, I got a 73. Um, now my, my freshman. Is in, that in your so, report card? It is. So yeah, that's, yeah, so, yeah. So that's my transcript. So, so I keep this and I've, I've, I've brought this on a couple of times. So, um, so, so my freshman and sophomore year, um, I actually, um, I actually, uh, got an 82 and an 80. Okay. Mm. Now I'm going to tell you a really funny story when it comes to English, cause you'll appreciate this. So my senior year, I had to pass English in order to graduate, right? Yes. You have to, you know, your, your, your core subjects are right. So, um, so algebra, I knew I passed because of when, so I took algebra two, um, academics. I graduated in 1998, but I'm telling you, I'm totally upfront about this because I also want kids to know like, Hey, you don't have to be the greatest of students in the world to become, you know, somebody that's recognized and somebody who people look up to and those kind of things. Right. So, um, so in English, I got a 63. Okay. In, uh, uh, in the first half of the school year. So I had to get at least a 58 or whatever it is. So I had, yeah. even if I failed, right. Which what you fail with, right. To get it. So I took my final on the last day of school in English and my English teacher who was, um, had a very dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Um, me being an athlete, I was just kind of like, so I remember her and my, uh, counselor coming to me at the end of the day and saying, you need to be the school's over today's the last day of school, but you need to be back at the school at, um, at 8 AM tomorrow because she's going to grade yours. There's a couple she needs to grade to see if you're going to pass or not. Yes. If you don't pass, then you got to go to summer school. You can't walk 
and you got to do this. Right. I was nervous as a cat. Not only was I nervous as a cat because I hadn't paid attention all year going into my final. It was like, I don't know how to write cursive. My like, I'm it's horrible reading and understanding. I'm my grammar is ridiculous. If you see any right, you're going to be like Shane. No, that's not, you know, I, I just chalk it up to 2020 and look, Hey, we, we yeah. use shorthand and text now. And you know, these different things. I'm sitting on the front steps at about 15 till set 15 till eight. It was a chilly May, uh, May morning do I'm sitting there and they both come to the door and they're like, why are you here? And I was like, well, you guys told me I had to be here. You were going to let me know if they started laughing. They said, get your ass out of here don't come back to the school don't get out no you think we weren't gonna pass you get out of here so they felt like it was a joke for them right to kind of go about this but but the reason the reason i keep my uh reason i keep my um my transcript is also also keep a version of it um in written and i travel around with it um and our and the reason that i do that is um i uh I was in England giving a talk and mm -hmm. a young man, I, I, I like to do, I mean, I'll, I'll share my story, but I like to do a lot of question and answer with kids because kids are very curious. And when you yeah. tell them a story, you tell them some insight, their own mind and own, own uh, yeah. imagination runs. So kid raises his hand and he says, there's no way, there's no way you barely graduated high school. You're a fraud. You know, this, you've done all these things. You're traveling around the world. You've built this million dollar business. You're doing all these things. You, you know, you're just up here telling us that da, 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 da. In my head, I'm looking at him. I said, well, you son of a gun, you like, ah, oh, man, I'll talk to you. So let's, and he was a high school kid. I said, man, I said, I told him, I said, me and you need to, I said, I'm not going to address your disrespect towards me publicly. Right. But let's me and you have a conversation when this is over because I'm, I'm going to prove to you. So mm -hmm. I, I, I flew home, I flew home and ordered a copy of my transcript and I had his email address and I scanned a copy of it in and mailed it to him. And he was like, my bad. He's like, you're right. He's like, you're told, he's like, man, you, he's like, holy cow. He's like, how did you even graduate? I said, that's what I told you. You didn't want to believe me because sometimes for these kids, it's hard to like, it's, it's, you can't see, it's hard to even see yeah. You know, so, so, which is why I enjoy what I, what I do. It's, it's to be able to show them a little glimpse into the future of, Hey, you, you don't have to do these things. That's why I want to write a book. Yeah. Right. It, it, because I want to be able to say, I hope I can get it finished before my English teachers in high school, because I want to find their addresses and I want to send them send all the copy and say, now, see here, you thought I was, you know, whatever. And you didn't, you know, you, you, you didn't think I was going to be this or, you know, cause a couple of them were like, Shane, you can tell stories so well because, and I've, we've completely gotten completely off topic here, but it's okay. we, 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 <laughs> we, 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 we would, we would actually go and I would give a report and I wouldn't write it. So I would just get up in front of and talk just about it. what we, and they were like, no, Shane, like you have to actually write this out. I'm like, I can't get it out of my head. Like I can, I can tell you, I can, she's like, Shane, but you're so good at telling a story. Even some of the ones you tell me when you come in here and you lie to me about this, that, and they're like, you're so like, they're so good. You have to be able to do that, but I can verbalize them. I just can't, I just can't put them pen to paper. So, but you know what I have, I have students like you and in, in my English four class and I have students like you in my college class. And, and one of the things that I do with them is the college essay. And that is probably the most emotional time for them is when I do the college essay, man. And when I say emotional, it's tears, they're crying. They're oh, yeah. it's like, down. it's like you gave them a jail sentence. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're telling me how they can't do it. Somebody's complaining that their arm is hurting. Somebody else is like, my hand is hurt. <laughs> it's just, all, it's a full on like bed of emotions with these college essays. Um, but I push, I push them and I don't let them get out. You don't get to get out easy. You don't get to give me some surface level something. I want you to dig deeper. That's my what I tell them. Right now you're in the surface. You're on the surface. Right now you're in shallow water. I need for this essay to go way deeper. And they're like, oh my God, I got to write again. Yep, you got to write again. And I need for it to be much deeper. <clears throat> 
than what you just tried to give me. Because what yeah. this right here is like someone who doesn't know you. But for a college essay, you need to be giving them something that feels genuine. This is not genuine. Yeah. And then there goes that paper. And they're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, then I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah. those tears. Don't get it on my paper. Come on, let's get it. Let's let's get it going. And they appreciate the after. Sure. But in the moment, they are. I'm I'm probably the worst. <laughs> yeah, me me and Michelle would have butted heads. I would have been like, "Why? Like, I've already passed the class. Like, I've already. I don't need to do this. Like, I'm yep. not. I I know what my grade is. I I was. I knew how to game the system. I knew how to look and yep. say, "Okay, it's like I can give you an example. So my senior year in chemistry, I got an eighty the first half of the year. Right. So I knew. I knew going into it that uh, everybody told me, Hey, if you have this person, the first half of the school year is super easy. Like you don't mm -hmm. have to memorize the periodic table. They do that second half of the semester. Like, uh, you know, it, you're good. Right. So I was like, Oh, okay. I'm going to go in. I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to get an 80 because if I get an 80 to pass, you have to have a 60 for the average. So that means all I got to do is get a 40 in the second half. And right. I'm good. I'm going to pass. There's nothing. You're going to be upset with me. Oh uh, man. I was never, I mean, that's disrespectful from a tip from a, to, to a teacher to like do that. And you know, I, so I get that. Um, and it's not something I'm proud of, but I own it. Um, and mm -hmm. I'll never forget with, with that, with, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say her name, but she, so the second I, I played basketball. So second half of the year, I'm just sleeping, I'm not doing anything. Oh man. She at start start of the second half. She was, she knew she could tell like you son of a gun and there wasn't anything she could do about it. So yeah. one day I'll never forget. That. I'll never forget this. She came and I don't know what she used, but she slammed whatever it was down so hard on the table. And I woke up and she was like, get out of my classroom right now you go to the assistant principal's office now now my assistant principal was easily maybe one of the greatest educators to ever walk the planet super super mm -hmm. cool guy ricardo sisney just he was like a dad to everybody uh would tell you exactly like it was would talk to you how you needed to be talked to not how the rules said he had to talk to you that kind of thing right yeah so i come walking in and he was like what are you doing in here and i was like well miss such and such just kicked me out of class and she sent me here She's on her way, and I'm just going to tell you right now, she's pissed. And he was like, okay. He was like, all right. He's like, just don't say anything. Just shut your mouth. He's like, I'll take care of it. She comes in. She slams the door. She used a couple four-letter words. She she had had enough. I, she probably had had a bad day, and then I just kind of, yeah, you know. Just, it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had had enough. And she was like, I don't want him back in my classroom. He's not allowed to walk back in here. If he wants to finish this classroom, I will send the work to your office, and he can come during that period and sit in your office and do it, but he is not coming in my classroom again. And he, and he looked at me. He was like, all right, that sounds good. And she walked out. He looked at me. We had a game. We had a basketball game that night. He looked at me. He says, "So you're gonna sneak me in the back door of the game?" And I was like, "I got you. I got you." I got, they they knew. Like it was like, "Why am I gonna? I'm not gonna push this issue with you yeah. to get it." So anyway, enough about me. Let's <laughs> dive in. Let's dive into a couple questions for you. I just like sharing that because it's like, hey, I'm I'm that student you sometimes have, and you're like, they walk out, and you're like, okay, breathe. It's gonna be okay. Like breathe. Like it's they're not all like that. They're not all like Shane. So yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so I, like I said, we typically wrap this up where I ask you two questions that are more on a personal level. Okay. Um, so, so the listeners can get to know you a little bit and to a little bit of insight, maybe some helpful information for, uh, for them. And then at the end, I'm going to let you ask me a question before we wrap it up. So first question is what is, we all know teachers miss a lunch period. They miss their, uh, they missed their planning period. You got to fill in with, for somebody else. You got to do these different things. And you've been doing this for 20 years now. So you probably have a solid go-to. What is your go-to snack that you keep at the desk to reach for? So you don't get hangry in between class or, you know, you've got it there to kind of get you through those long days or when you miss your lunch. My go-to is trail mix. Trail Hands mix. Down. Okay. Cause it's quick. It's easy. I can eat it at the door. I can take it with me. 
trail mix. Little protein, all- little candy, <laughs> little fruit. Yep. It has all my stuff in it. I throw in some M&Ms, some raisin. And I don't oh, so you make it. it. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't. Oh, OK, spend. OK. Yeah. Like why pay somebody ten dollars when I could just buy the stuff for like six bucks and make my own? OK. So I just make my own trail mix. And and uh, that's my my go to is trail mix. Now, I do keep like granola bars and stuff, but that's yeah. not for me. That's for kids. I keep like for kids who are like, oh, I'm hungry. I didn't eat. And I'm just like, here, get a granola bar. Like do my yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So I keep food in the desk for them, but my go-to granola, I mean, not granola, I'm sorry, trail mix, hands trail down. Trail mix, trail mix. Okay. All right. Now, here's a little bit of, of a unique one because of where you're located. Um, what is your, what is your favorite style or yeah, favorite style of food that you get in in where where you're at, and do you have a, like a favorite restaurant that you go to that has it? Man, that is hard. A favorite style of food. I am really a seafood foodie. Okay, well you're in so, the perfect spot for that. Yes. So if you can give me seafood any way, any shape, but whatever you're doing, it's good then I like that. My go-to place used to be a place called Cap's Place. Okay. And you take like a little boat to get there. It's like off on the little like sandbar island, whatever. Okay. But the food is so good. Like it's so good. Is it so, is it like Car- Caribbean and style uh, uh, themed or is it? Uh, um, I guess you could say it has a little bit of, of, of the Caribbean in there. I like anything that is blackened. I like Cajun. I don't know. I like sushi. I like sashimi. I like any oh, yeah, anything that. Fan. Yeah, I'm 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 a seafood foodie. So however you can make it, like if it's fish, throw it on my plate, and and I got it. <laughs> I see, so 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 I actually pulled it up here. I see it. I see it. Yeah, Cap, Cap Place. Cap, yeah. Cap, yeah, Cap, Cap's Place Island Restaurant. Yes. I see it. Oh, take yeah. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, a Lighthouse Point. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so, the food right, so, is so good. Yeah, so, yep. So anybody who goes down, uh, Miss Shelton here has uh, recommended it, so... Let us uh, let us know in the comments if you've been there and or if you hear this at some point in time and you go, uh, let us know how that goes. So uh, I'm uh, um, it's it's been some time since I've been down to Miami and it looks like the um, fish is definitely. Wahoo, Cobia, local dolphin, pompano, lobster, stone crab, man, I'm getting hungry thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap up. I'm going to turn the mic to you and let you, it can be about anything. It can be about this, my journey, anything in life, where I'm from. It could be about anything. Um, I guess my question would be, how do you motivate and inspire students who are like you? Because those can be some of, some of the hardest kids to reach. So how do you motivate and inspire those kids? So most things that I do are very raw and uncut. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, uh, I don't have a lot of fluff in me. I can't, I just can't do it. Um, so I'm very real. Um, I'm, I'm very real with my journey and my story and my failures and mistakes that I've made. Um, and, and much like your message and, and how you, um, try to convey things across hard work is how I've been able to separate myself uh, with that, um, I think, I think a big part of it and, and, and it's figuring out a unique way to do it, to, to ask questions, um, and, or get them to talk. So, um, for me, when, you know, if I'm engaging with a big audience, I know that I'm not going to, I know that I'm not going to be able to connect and resonate with every single one of them in there. Uh, right. so a lot of times if I have some heads up of the demographic or who it is and kind of the backstory, Um, I can word things or set a certain set of questions for them to answer as a group by show of hands and different things to kind of understand there. And then really just kind of play on the emotional side of it and to make a quick emotional connection and say, Hey, you know, this is who I am. This is what I've done. And typically what I do is I share my accomplishments first Mm. 
And then I go back and say, yeah. now let me share with you a little bit about where I come from and, and where, and they're like, uh, are you for real? Like, yes, I've been through this. I've done this. I've had a gun pulled on me three times in my life. I've, mm -hmm. you know, these different things to go through. And, and because, you know, because we know this, right? Like in order to get young people to retain something that you're trying to, to teach them, you have to do so and you have to get them to engage with you, right? Yes. Well, well, the quickest way for me to get them to engage with is to, is to tell them a story where it hits an emotional chord that almost makes it seem unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Right. So I word and I play my story out in a way of it blindsides them. Right. It's like watching the it's like watching the TV show. And you're like, oh, here's the ending. This guy killed this person. I know it. You've been telling me this all throughout the episode. And then it's like, boom, nope. The other guy that you thought was the hero, he actually killed him. And now he's going right. to jail. So it's it's being able to do that in a way of using tone, um, using, um, you know, I, I use a lot of like com like today like current day references whether it's something in their culture or video games or different things and it's just being able to find a way um I, and i will tell you this and um I, I do realize that public speaking is it's the number one fear in the world so like it's 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 what most people are just terrified um and have it what's what i find amazing is a lot of teachers are also afraid of public speaking but yes like, they're, they're okay with getting up in front of students um, and, and talking, um, but the moment somebody comes in to observe or the moment, you know, they have to do an assembly or a PD and, you know, they've got to do these things that my wife hates it. My wife, the, if my wife wants zero attention on her whatsoever, she'll start getting red splotches on her neck yeah. and like, sure. Yeah. She's, she, she's out. She doesn't want any part of it. But, um, if you can get through that, um, yes and start to learn and understand body language when you say certain things or you use certain tones, um, young people respond to, to energy and tone really, really well. Yes, um, and, and lastly, the last and probably the most crucial part of it is just be real and authentic with them. And yeah. kids, um, kids can, kids can see through your BS kids can yes. see through the, the facade that you try to put on. Yep. Um, which is why I like how you explained what you do in the beginning of the school year. And just you, you're real with them. Like, look, I'm, I'm a flawed human being just like everybody else. Um, but I'm real and so are you. So we're all the same and we're all on the same page and let's, let's learn and grow together. So. That's, and that's the goal, learn and grow together. I never try to make them feel like I know more than them. I've just been at it a little bit longer but I'm open to learning from them. And that makes a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Danielle, it's been a joy to have you on here. This has been really, really fun. Uh, hopefully I didn't go Thank too you. long and interrupt your day. Um, too, too much on your end. No, you're fine. Thank you so much. This was fun. I, I really enjoy this. I can't wait when, when I get my book out, I, you know, we'll see, we'll see which title happens here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. This hey, was no nice. Problem. No problem. I, even more importantly than you being on here, I appreciate you waking up every single day and accepting those challenges because, um, I say it every episode, you know, you could walk into your classroom and a student can come and tell you the greatest day of their life. And a student can walk in and tell you the most horrible, horrendous, scariest thing that you've ever heard happening to a child. And, and you have to deal with it. You have to hold you, you have to hold yourself together. You have to navigate those waters. Um, and you choose to do that every day. You've chose to do that every day for nearly 20 years. Um, so those young people that you've crossed paths with those young people that you will cross paths with and those communities and parents that are, are lucky enough to have you around, um, I'm sure no doubt are massively thankful. So, so thank you for, for doing what you do and playing a part in helping um, impact in a positive way, the future of our world in a lot of ways with the young people. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on and, uh, let's stay in touch. All right. You have an awesome day. All right. You too.